From new blood to 30-year comebacks, we've got you covered for another insane month. Let the mayhem begin. These are my favorite metal and metal-adjacent albums of February, and we're starting with Morbid Saint with Swallowed by Hell. Morbid Saint is responsible for what I consider to be one of the last great thrash metal albums of the classic era in Spectrum of Death, only to basically drop off the face of the earth. Their unfinished 1992 sophomore release was published in 2015, but this is the band's first new material in 30 years. That's an incredible amount of pressure to overcome, but I'm thankful to say that the boys managed to live up to the hype. Right from the appropriately titled Rise of the Ashes, these guys bring the speed and aggression as if they never left. 2023 was an amazing year for returning legacy acts, both in thrash and death metal, and this also sets a high bar, proof that passion and effort are far more important than age. You're never too old to stand up to a bully. Then we have Atoll with Inhuman Implants. <laughs> Just a year after the already impressive Human Extract, this Arizona brutal death metal band is back for their fifth punishing record. Everyone here contributes to the fantastically crushing violence of this record, but I have to once more highlight the sickening jangle of the bass tone. Love the sense of humor too, that Mr. Slave sample in Gay For God in particular is chef's kiss. Ah, oh Jesus Christ. I've mentioned before that the gurgly, slammy, brutal stuff generally doesn't do much for me, but Atoll are definitely an exception to the rule. Much like bands like Cytotoxin, they take that foundation of sheer blunt force trauma and craft it into something that is strangely catchy. Then we have Fonge with Perdition. <laughs> It was pointed out to me that I've been mispronouncing this band's name as Fang for a while, but these are my favorite Frenchmen, so I had to give it right. Continuing, though, to prove themselves to be one of the most prolific bands of the underground, this is the band's seventh album since just 2016, and despite that pace of output, the quality has never suffered. More dark fusions of industrial sludge and post-metal to haunt your dreams. <laughs> Compositions worm their way through ever-expanding atmosphere, just as well as punishing moments of extremity side-by-side side with the unsettling, godflesh-inspired sounding vocals. It feels like each album has a slightly different focus despite the shared DNA, and this time I hear an emphasis on earworm melodic synths and toying more with clean vocals to very interesting effect. Strongly recommended for fans of Author and Punisher. Yo, we have plenty more albums to go, but if you're enjoying the video so far, hit the like button, it helps me out, and comment your own favorites below as we go along. But next up, we have Persephone with Lingua Ignota Part 1. One of my favorite up-and-coming progressive metal bands with a new EP, Metanoia was one of my favorite albums of 2022, so I was definitely looking forward to this. And this time they have new vocalist Daniel Rodriguez Fleece in tow. <laughs> The phrase that kept coming to mind for me was Gojira meets Between the Buried and Me and Rivers of Nile. These songs sound absolutely massive, soundtrack worthy even in their atmosphere, but also impressively technical with plenty for the musicians out there to chew on. Then we have Una Sprechlichen Kolten with Hexen Sabbath. This Chilean death metal band has been at it for almost 25 years and continue to bring only the darkest of atmosphere with this latest full length. Take Behemoth the Satanist and crossbreed it with Despel Omega and Adversarial. Season heavily with some pretty shredding guitar solos and you get the idea. This is also another great example of what I consider to be the perfect ratio of death to doom, drawing further comparisons to Incantation's Diabolical Conquest. Absolutely menacing stuff that perfectly fits the demonic ceremony aesthetic of the cover art. Valima. Valima. Then we have Enterprise Earth with Death, an anthology. Suffer, 
This ever-rising profile deathcore crew makes a return now with new vocalist Travis Warland showing off every vocal style in his repertoire. Stylistically, I love how much these guys toss out the rulebook on this album, seeming to cover any genre that interests them. Mathcore, gent, progressive, metalcore, symphonic, and more are executed with incredible proficiency. And on top of that, plenty of impressive guest performances too from members of Spite, Shadow of Intent, Trivium, and Glass Casket, as well as The Faceless. I've tended to like but never love this band's previous releases, but with this one, they've really stepped up their game and crafted something I dug from start to finish. Then we have Meth with Shame. I was captivated by this Chicago band's debut, Mother of Red Light, so much so that I did an interview with frontman Seb Alvarez, and I'd say this follow-up was worth the four-year wait. Their sound is a chilling union of sludge, noise, and extreme influences reminiscent of Ken Mode and Swans. The haunting vocals and ratcheting tension of the title track also take me back to that Last Daughters album. <laughs> Then you've got the almost crowless energy of the dissonant cruelty and damn near primitive man black holes of doubt and blackmail. Admittedly, this was not the best album to listen to while iced into my home in constant fear of the roof collapsing, but if you want a taste of what that felt like, shame will take you there. We are creatures that should not exist by natural law. Hmm, that sounds god fucking awful, Rush. Then we have petrification with sever sacred light. The second album from this Portland death metal band, one I'd most closely compare to Autopsy, but they also list influences that include Boat Thrower, Coffins, and Demigod. Super old school, and I appreciate that they keep the death to doom ratio about 80-20, allowing for solid dynamics, but aggression above all else. It's brutal and caveman-like, with the pounding drums only further adding to the primitive vibes. Sepulchral Legions, in particular, is a banger, but this is a very consistent listen, again, from front to back. Then we have Thy Shining Curse with Abyssaoth. The debut album from this Pittsburgh symphonic death metal band, very much in the vein of Flesh God Apocalypse, especially when the pace picks up alongside the orchestration, but they put their own twist on it with some slower saxophone-driven sections, more on par with groups like Aeneon and Psy. <laughs> I already love me some symphonic death metal, but these guys have definitely thrown in even more things that I love into a single package. There's some room for improvement in terms of songwriting and some of the vocal elements, but overall, I'm excited to hear more. Then there's Stellar Remains with Wastelands. <laughs> The constant march of new death metal releases continues with this Brisbane band recommended for fans of Blood Incantation, Horrendous, and Tomb Mold, and with this EP, I can see why. Great mix of cavernous, old-school atmosphere, machine gun drumming, and progressively-minded songwriting that will take you for a surprising left turn just when you think you've got them figured out. <laughs> And the deeper you get in, the more it unfolds and reveals new layers. Wasteland, for one, sports some harmonized melodic guitar leads I'd associate more with the likes of Chemist. The occasional cleans could use a little bit more work, but other than that, count me excited to, again, hear more. Then we have The Last 10 Seconds of Life with No Name Graves. <laughs> More deathcore this month, this time courtesy of this Pennsylvania crew formed in 2010. Something I appreciate about these guys is that they ignore most of the oversaturated modern tropes of the genre in favor of the more pummeling and often hardcore inspired sound of groups like the Acacia Strain. Songs are often molasses slow to only further emphasize each snare hit like one extended breakdown. Furthermore, Tyler Beam continues to prove an excellent choice since replacing John Robert Santorino in 2022. His deep, deathy growls are seriously imposing and definitely tap into my lizard brain. Every syllable feels like a sledgehammer to the cranium. This may be my most listened album of the entire month. Then we have Hannes Grossman with Echoes of Eternity. <laughs> Hail to the 
Grossman has played in the likes of Alkaloid, Triptychon, Obscura, Hate Eternal, Necrophagist, and many more. And with this latest solo EP, he sought to pay tribute to the musicians of those bands who helped to get him where he is today. And being the incredibly multi-talented musician that he is, I think he nailed it. Five songs that scarcely give you a moment to take a breath in their raging technical performances and constantly shifting progressive structures. I've always thought of his music as supremely heavy, but also very smart and also just a musician's dream. Then we have Hand of Kaliok with Corey Vrecken. This is a husband and wife duo mixing melodic death metal and Scottish folk music, so two of my favorite genres in one. They dropped my jaw with the captivating opener Three Cs, and that impressive atmosphere carries all the way through to the end. The progressive elements and harsh vocals also draw strong comparisons to Bella Cor for me. Basically, take that foundation, but then add Celtic elements and gorgeous, drifting female clean vocals reminiscent of Fallujah. Really stunning stuff, and probably my second real top-shelf Melodeth album of the year, along with High Race. Looking forward to hearing more from this project as well. Then we have Chelsea Wolfe with She Reaches Out to She Reaches Out to She. Not metal per se, but if you really care about that distinction, you're in the wrong place. I love Chelsea's recent collab with Converge, and now this latest outing is really tickling my 90s spidey sense with what feels like a fusion of Nine Inch Nails with Portishead. Churning industrial and electronics with a touch of jazz and always haunting vocals. <laughs> Tracks like Tunnel Lights in particular give me goosebumps, and the liminal damn near brings me to tears. I'd also consider throwing in a Radiohead comparison for certain moments like Place in the Sun. Really emotionally stirring stuff, but also well composed and highly re-listenable. Then we have Austrian Death Machine with Quad Brutal. Tim Lambesis is back, but this time instead of a new As A Lay Dying record, he's serving up the first album in 10 years from his other project. One centered around the action movie exploits of the one and only Arnold Schwarzenegger. The riffs will certainly sound familiar, but with an iron pumping high octane twist and quite a few guest appearances as well. <laughs> Basically, think of this as the beefcake version of As I Lay Dying. Beefcake! 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 And while I too have misgivings about the man, I can't deny just how well this taps into the part of me that religiously listened to records like Frail Words Collapse and An Ocean Between Us in college and high school. Make the decision for yourself, but if I'm being honest, I had a great time with this album. Then there's Borknagar with Fall. <laughs> This Norwegian progressive black metal band back for their 12th album since forming in the second wave all the way back in the 90s. Summits makes for an excellent single and opener with the perfect contrast of harsh and ominous classic black metal verses with Vortex's soaring clean choruses. And honestly, this may have some of ICS Vortex's best performances of all time in an already impressive career on tracks like Moon. <laughs> Really stunning production too, once more really capturing the chill in the air and every impact of the drums. Another tour de force in a case of every track having something special to offer while contributing to a larger and deeply profound whole. Top three for them if you ask me, check out the discography tier list for more thoughts. Then we have Sleepy Time Gorilla Museum with Of The Last Human Being. Over the last 10 years or so, I've been getting more and more into the weirder side of metal and rock, and it doesn't get much weirder than this California crew. Furthermore, this is their first album in 17 years, so I was stoked to hear what avant-garde madness they would cook up this time. And what follows is an experience unlike anything else you'll hear this year. It's an utter maelstrom of anxiety-inducing strings, chaotic rhythms, and eclectic vocal performances that rival Mr. Bungle. So refreshing to hear something so truly unpredictable. If you dig the likes of Psy, Bjork, Igor, and the various works of Mike Patton, do yourself a favor and... Free your mind. Then we have Ishan with Ishan. Well, 
In case you've been living under a rock, Ishan is an incredibly multi-talented Norwegian musician who initially made a name for himself as the frontman of the mighty symphonic black metal progenitor's Emperor. For most, that would be more than enough to secure a legacy, but his solo work is arguably even more impressive in some ways, and it comes full circle here with this being the most symphonically focused album he's probably ever done. We're talking full orchestra and even an alternate orchestra-only version alongside his eclectic melding of black metal and progressive music. Again, for those less familiar, I would easily pair this and any of his other records with the modern albums of Enslaved and Borknagar, and frankly, this quickly became my second favorite of his solo works, just behind Arctis. Then we have Zombie Shark with Die Laughing. I ride my life Longtime viewers should be familiar with Corey's work as he has been on the podcast, his poster from the previous album is on the back wall behind me, and also the talented artist he designed the Neon Skeletor artwork for our Metal Trenches merch line. Five. Fire now! That aside, you MySpace era cyber grinders out there are going to love his violent fusions of industrial, breakbeat, math core, hyper pop, Nintendo core, and grind. <laughs> With 16 tracks over just 30 minutes, every second is jam-packed with dense and unpredictable shifting soundscapes seemingly designed to twist your brain in knots. I could draw some stylistic comparisons to Darko and The Armed, but Zombie Shark is far more eclectic and ambitious in scope. And then my favorite metal album of February, and this was a tough choice, but it has to go to Job for a Cowboy with Moon Healer. <laughs> After a decade, they are back, and I feel confident in saying that the wait was well worth it, maybe more so than anything else on this list. This album is like a cross between Rivers of Nile, Inanimate Existence, and The Black Dahlia Murder, really ripping into that guitar, and some of these bass sections just straight up turned me into the skull on the cover art. <laughs> Notably, Naveen Koperweiss of Entheos and formerly Animals as Leaders drums on this album, making for another welcome addition, and of course, Johnny still killing it on the vocals. I always say that comeback albums are extra hard, as with every year away, the expectations only get more and more unreachable. But goddamn, Job for a Cowboy nailed it right through the final notes of the Forever Rot. Check out my tier list again for further thoughts on their entire discography as well. Y'all check out this playlist for more of my favorite metal albums of 2024 by month. Again, let me know down in the comments what were your favorites and least favorites, but that'll do it for now. Flight of Icarus signing off. I will see you in the trenches.